What's going on guys, Real Touch Gmail here back with another Java tutorial and today what we're going to be doing is we are going to create the spawning system for our enemies. So if we went ahead and played the game now, as you can see we have our spaceship here and we have the ability to create as much enemies as we'd like. I just took that out just in the beginning before the tutorial actually started. But uh, yeah, today we're going to make the spawning system. So basically what I am going to make this spawning system do is pretend my spaceship here is an enemy. And, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, Say this enemy comes down and it starts as one and it goes to the bottom of the screen. And it keeps looping back and forth, back and forth. Now, uh, once this, this spaceship, the player, shoots that enemy, then two will appear at the top of the screen and come down. And once you kill both of those, then three will come down, then four, then five. Then once you kill all five, then six will come down and so on and so forth until you die from getting hit too much with the you know health goes down or whatever, which we will get into in later tutorials. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and make the uh, the spawning system. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create two variables in our game class, and this is going to be private int enemy count, and I'm going to equal to one, and private int enemy killed equals zero. So basically, what we what these variables do is enemy count uh, shows you know or t tells the game how many spaceships to spawn so you know if we killed our first spaceship right off the bat then like I uh, explained two would come down so then this enemy count would change to two then three then four then five right and then enemy killed say we had three spaceships in in our in our field here and we killed two of them we wouldn't want to spawn four we would we would want them to infinitely loop until we killed all of them so when this equals three then this will equal to four and this will go back to zero and then once you kill four, then this will go back to five. This will go to five, and then that will go back to zero. I hope that makes sense. But basically, there you go. That's what we want. And we're going to go ahead and create some getters and setters. Now, if you're using Eclipse, there's an easier way of doing this. All you have to do is go to Source, uh, Generate Getters and Setters, and then click our Enemy Count and Enemy Killed variables right there. So now all of these variables uh, are, are Enemy Killed and Enemy Count. They are all getters and setters for us automatically made which is pretty nice. So so now that we have that, nothing has really actually changed yet. I mean, we have our enemy counter, enemy killed, but if you played the game, nothing would happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the controller and we're gonna create a new method. Public void add enemy. And we're gonna have a parameter in here, int enemy count. Okay, and inside this method, I'm just gonna create a basic for loop, int i equals zero, i is less than enemy count, and I plus plus and inside here add entity new enemy r dot next int 640 because we want that random negative 10 and then text this should all make sense to you so say for example you know our enemy count was uh, we just got done killing all four spaceships it would call this method and put five in the parameter instead of four so this is just basically generating uh, our spaceships to begin with so in our game class here, we're going to come back, and since we don't have a menu or anything yet, we're just going to have the first spaceship spawn right away. So I'm going to say C dot add enemy, or I'm sorry, or no, yeah, add enemy. Actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to change this to create enemy. I, don't know, I think that just looks a little better. So C dot create enemy. We'll call this, and then our enemy, our parameter here will be our variable that we set up right here. So now if we went ahead and played it, as you can see, one spaceship spawns. And say we wanted you know five to spawn. So this enemy count, if we change that to five, see now there's five that spawned. Okay, so now that that's all good and done, when they you'll notice when the spaceships go to the bottom of the screen, they don't go back up to the top. So we're gonna go into our enemy class here. And in the tick method, if y is greater than game dot height multiplied by game dot scale, then y equals negative ten. Now here you have a choice too. Uh, now this is all about being a programmer. Is okay. So here let, let me just show you that, that that does work right there. So once they get to the bottom of the screen, they will go back up. But as you can see, they're in the same position. Now this is where you can decide what you want to do. Do you want them to go back down and they'll be in the same position once they come back up? Or do you want them to be in a different random position? If you wanted them to be in a different random position, you could easily just say x equals r dot next int. 
640, and then you could <coughs> you could declare that up here equals new random. See now when they get back to the bottom of the screen, they're all going to be mixed up from what what they were. So let's just wait for that. And as you can see, they're in they're in different positions here. Now another thing you can do, and I'm just kind of you know that's the basic spawning system. And next tutorial we'll get into collision detection. But for now I'm just you know rehashing stuff that you can actually do. So say we wanted them to have different speeds, so we can say r dot next int um, three plus one. There we go. Let's just put that in parentheses there. And now they will all be different speeds. And, okay, yeah, that, that was a bad example because this actually wouldn't be good programming. Because, well, if you wanted to, because see, they change speeds, and that's because that's in the tick method. So if you wanted that to be changed, we could just make a new variable speed equals r dot next int three plus one, and then you could say y plus equals speed. And there you go. There you can see that they're in different positions and that gets a little bit off the screen there but that's right but I think I'm gonna keep this behavior and you know I think this makes it a little bit harder and uh, a little bit more unique and uh, you know a little bit more exciting rather than just them all going in a line <clears throat> so uh, yeah that's gonna be the tutorial for today next tutorial what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, oh yeah also if you wanted to change up the speed you could easily just put it down here and uh, so now every time they go to the bottom of the screen, they'll have different speeds coming back out. Which, again, I don't know if you want that. If you do, that's cool. If not, then then don't add it. But, uh, yeah, that's my tutorial for today. Go and leave a like. Go and subscribe. Again, next tutorial, we're going to be going into collision detection. Let's try and get this up to 30 likes as uh, it does motivate me. And, um, you know, give me, give me uh, satisfaction and uh, let me know that you guys are learning. Of course, if you don't want to leave a like, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. Peace.